Hey everybody, I've taken a little break on these YouTube videos, but something really irritated me and I'm back. Now understand, I'm irritated all the time. I'm constantly irritated. But the January 6th anniversary combined with two of my least favorite people, Ted Cruz and Tucker Carlson, well, that just did it for me. Now, if, if you follow me at all, you may have heard me say that I probably like Ted Cruz more than most of my former colleagues like Ted Cruz, and I hate Ted Cruz. But Tucker has become an even bigger dick, if that's possible, by morphing into this odd performance artist who's forever looking just a, a little mystified by things he's just flat out lying about, like COVID. Now, maybe you remember this, this one from last summer. It doesn't make any sense at all. If the vaccine is effective, there is no reason for people who have received the vaccine to wear masks or avoid physical contact. So maybe it doesn't work and they're simply not telling you that. Well, you hate to think that, especially if you've gotten two shots, but what's the other potential explanation? We can't think of one. You know, it's kind of a shame that Tucker isn't allowed to read newspapers or watch news on other networks or go to C-SPAN and watch the eight-hour Zoom on the efficacy and safety of the vaccine that CDC had aired that very same week. But Tucker was doing that, I'm just asking questions kind of thing that he does. Why won't immigrants explain why they're just so dirty and violent? I'm just asking. Well, the Fox audience just loves, loves, loves this bullshit. And as host of the number one cable news program, Tucker Carlson has become more powerful than Ted Cruz. And Ted made a mistake last week. He referred to the January 6th rioters who injured 140 Capitol Police as terrorists. Cruz's mistake? He had the audacity to call those terrorists terrorists? So we played this tape for you last time. We were surprised by it. We prefaced it by saying every conservative appreciates Ted Cruz because he's one of the smartest and most articulate people in the Congress and he's conservative. But he referred publicly to what happened on January 6th as quote a violent terror attack. Here it is. Uh, we are approaching a solemn anniversary this week. Uh, and it is an anniversary of a violent terrorist attack on the Capitol where we saw the men and women of law enforcement demonstrate incredible courage, incredible bravery, uh, risk their lives uh, to defend the men and women who serve in this Capitol. Senator Cruz was game enough to come on tonight. We appreciate that. He joins us now. Senator, thanks so much for coming on. There's Ted's shit-eating grin. And this created a great opportunity for Tucker to humiliate Cruz by enforcing what has become Republican Party orthodoxy. That those who stormed the Capitol were peaceful demonstrators who just wanted to urge Congress to stop the election certification in order to give the Arizona, Pennsylvania, and Georgia state legislatures time to uncover the widespread election fraud that had thrown the election wrongly to Joe Biden. So let's pick up with Tucker doing the hully gully on Cruz's Adam's apple. You never use words carelessly. Um, and yet you called this a terror attack when by no definition was it a terror attack. That's a lie. You told that lie on purpose, and I'm wondering why you did. And there was Cruz nodding. Yeah, Judge, I told a lie. I'm sorry, Judge. Let me explain why I told a lie, Judge. The way I phrased things yesterday, it, it was sloppy and, and it was frankly dumb. And, I don't and buy that. Whoa, 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 whoa. Well, I don't well, buy that. For, look, I've known you a long time since before you went to the Senate. You were a Supreme Court contender. You take words as seriously as any man who's ever served in the Senate. And every word you repeated that phrase, I do not believe that you used that accidentally. I just don't. So Tucker's saying, Ted, I know you very well, and you lie all the time. And now the groveling continues. 
It's, so, Tucker, as a result of my sloppy phrasing, it's caused a lot of people to misunderstand what I meant. Let me tell you what, what I meant to say. What I was referring to are, are the limited number of people who engaged in violent attacks against police officers. Now, I think you and I both agree that if you assault a police officer, you should go to jail. Okay, who doesn't think that people who assault police officers should go to jail? I mean, there are exceptions. People with mental illness issues, I suppose, maybe should get treatment, but yeah. What? A lot of people have misunderstood well, that comment. Wait a I was second, focused, but even your yeah. wait, but hold on. What you just said doesn't make sense. So if somebody assaults a cop, he should be charged and go to jail. I couldn't agree more. Mm -hmm. We have said that for years. But that person's still not a terrorist. How many people have been charged with terrorism on January so listen, 6th? Like, why'd you not, use that word? You're playing uh, into the other side's characterization that, as Joe Kent just explained, allows them to define an entire population as foreign combatants. And you know that. So why'd you do it? So, so Tucker. Foreign combatants? All terrorists are foreign combatants? Really? Tell that to the families of the 168 people who died in the Oklahoma City bombing. What foreign country was Timothy McVeigh from? Has Tucker ever heard the phrase Domestic terrorism is actually part of the U.S. criminal code. Of course Tucker knows that. So why does Tucker mock his audience so? Is it because he, he just takes great pleasure in knowing how willfully ignorant they are? I mean, have none of them heard of the Unabomber, the Simonese Liberation Army, the Ku Klux Klan, the Proud Boys? Or how about the Oath Keepers? Their leader and 10 other members were indicted last week on seditious conspiracy. Now that's going to be pretty easy to prove. I mean, their oath is, I will overthrow the government. Look, this is today's Republican Party. They're fascists. The truth means nothing. They are in the thrall of a psychopath, a criminal who has total contempt for the law and who if elected in 2024, will put an end to the world's oldest democracy. Crap. Okay, uh, just so I don't end on a complete downer, I'll be back on tour starting February 18th in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. We had to postpone two January shows in Northern California because of Omicron. Uh, you can find the tour schedule by going to alfranken.com. Like this video and please subscribe to the channel. Remember to get boosted if you haven't already been boosted. And I hope to see you on the road uh, wearing a mask. Mm -hmm.